Welcome to my rodeo. What are you doing, Ward? Man, I've been traveling to see y'all this morning. <laughs> How long was the trip? Well, it's supposed to be two and a half, but I didn't get a ticket, so it was 2.15. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> you still got it. You look good, man. You look healthy. Man, I stay busy. Yeah. You know, I, I run from uh, dusk to dark every day. I was in the workout room this morning at 4.30 and uh, feeding the dogs and the horses and getting in the shower and hauling butt down here. What is the motivation to stay in such good shape? Well, you know, started working out racing. Mm -hmm. But, golly, I just had such great role models growing up with a work ethic. So if I don't feel like I'm accomplishing and doing every single thing I can every day, then I don't feel right right here. So yeah. I'm, just, I'm just driven, man. You and your brother are so different, all right? What is the deal? Like, why you and him don't seem like brothers to me. <laughs> But y'all did. Y'all were together a lot. Y'all spent a lot of y'all's, you know, y'all raced with, y'all raced together at South Boston. I, I don't know what y'all's life was like around the house when you were teenagers. But why are y'all so different from each other? Well, look, I'm gonna, I'm gonna tell you something. And I talked to Jeff last week. If I think of something three or four times, I'm gonna deal with it. I'm, I'm gonna think about how I'm gonna deal with it. I knew that you and I were going to be talking about this today because I saw a little bit of the interview with Jeff that y'all did yeah. last year. And I called Jeff just because this kind of spurred it a little bit. And, it, and we had a great conversation. The first thing I told him is I didn't feel like I'd been a really good older brother. Mm. Really? And I told him I loved him. And, um, and I do. And I love my brother Brian also. But we... We had the greatest parents in the world. I mean, back in the 70s, you know, when I was growing up, and even in the late 60s, had a lot of freedom. You know, my freedom was staying in the woods. And you got to envision my mom was got a, Brian is three years younger than me, Jeff is five and a half. So, you know, with mom taking care of those two, that gave me a lot of freedom to go out and just be a kid in the outdoors. But Jeff's uh, growing up was a little bit different than mine. You know, I took the hard road, so I got sent away to a bunch of schools during the summer school, during the summer. I so got what, sent, kind, what kind of schools? Reading, speaking, uh, uh, writing, English. You know, and to be honest with you, if I was sitting in a classroom, I was interested in what was going on outside, mm -hmm. <laughs> outside in, of the woods, not, not in the classroom. I just... I just didn't get it, and I didn't realize that uh, I needed to do what was expected of me and then take the easy road. I took the hard road, and that made me get sent away to military yeah. schools and all this. What military schools did you go to? Hargrave. I, we used to go to Hargrave and play basketball. We, I, went to, I was at Oak Ridge. So Oak Ridge. Well, we have rival military schools at the table. <laughs> Who knew? They was a – there was, I guess, a bit of a rivalry, but Hargrave is the real deal. Yeah. Now, Oak Ridge is is a way easier. Hargrave, when we'd go up to Hargrave, it was scary. So here's this is the way I – when I was at Hargrave three and a half years, graduated second lieutenant, there were some military schools we could go to. They were sharp, like Fork Union. They were sharp. Hargrave was sharp. And I, I'm not saying anything about it. Sure. The other ones would be slack where you could wear your yes. clothes hanging down and all that. And not, not at Hargrave. Right. You're no. going to walk the bull ring. Yeah. But anyway, Jeff and I just had a different upbringing. And I had some grand older role models. So I was really close with uh, one of my granddads and my grandmamas. My dad, you know, uh, we spent a lot of time together in the outdoors. But I had some other older gentlemen, particularly C.R. Sanders, that uh, that taught me a lot about uh, land stewardship and just taught me a lot of lessons. So he was like a second dad, a granddad, and a dear friend all at one. That started at this tall. So my roots were really deep. And when my parents separated, man, and we all— How we, old were you in that? Habit? I was in college. So mom called me and told me that she needed me home. I knew it was coming. But Jeff is 16. So you y'all y'all know everybody, there's no perfect family. 
my mom and dad were perfect parents, and I was and still feel that way today. But when they split, it obviously affected Jeff a lot more than me. Mm. And so, you know, when I was brought up, I was made to go work in construction because that was what my granddad founded, my dad run. That was it was like a family farm, you know. What do you do at a family farm? You go work and pull your weight. Well, I realized real quick when Jeff got to that age, Dad did not make him do that. So it gave me a little bit of an attitude. How that? Why the hell does he get to stay? You know, do something other than work. But Jeff, uh, Jeff worked really hard, and uh, you know his racing career. Um, you know, Dad gave him the opportunity. I think a lot of the reason that Dad did what he did for Jeff at that age, and not Brian or I, is Dad felt guilty of why the family split up. Huh. And you know, and then as later, Dale, later as when I got in the street stock, and you know, I went to a race to see how they were doing, and my career, you know, it wasn't. Dad wanted to see if I was focused. And after a year or so, he realized there was nothing else that was going to come between me and that race car after work. But anyhow, uh, you know, I'm proud of Jeff, and uh, you know, my, I've got two great brothers, and we just had we just had different upbringing, man. Yeah, in the can. same house, but different. Wow. Upbringing. So why the hell do I talk different? <laughs> Jeff said I was from the southern end of the house. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> he yeah. did say that. So he started racing first. All right, and yeah. so how old is he? I guess eighteen. Well, when you I, went, wait, where college did you go to? I went to Elon. All right, and what did you finish? No, sir. So you went. How many years did you go? I went two and a half, and didn't know what I was going to do in my life, and called my buddy C. R. Sanders that uh, owned that eleven hundred acres that my foundation owns now is protected, and went lived in the woods two years. Right after college. You, you quit well, college. You left college. Well, left I, college. I went home, and I, my parents were like, it was my second year, like, what are you going to graduate in? And I said, I'm going to graduate. I'm going to major in philosophy. It just came easy to me. Dad said, you're not going to make a living doing that, son. you got to have business. So I went and took a business economics course during the summer. Didn't go very well. I called my buddy Sanders, can I stay in this tobacco barn? Why you know, did you want to do that? Well, it's, I wanted to go to something that I, I knew I felt at peace at, and I just, you know, I just didn't know where my life was going. And being outdoors, I'm, I'm at peace, I'm self-reliant, and that's what I needed. How far was this from the house? It's about 30 miles from... from Did you, know. you tell your dad and mom that you were going to go live in this <laughs> shack? Well, I didn't have a vehicle. You didn't have a car? So you really sort of disappeared from civilization then when you say you well, moved out Well, I the did, woods. but look, uh, we had some hellacious times back there in high school with friends, so I still I still had company on a Folk, weekend. Yeah, you still had some visitors. They knew yeah. where to find you. <laughs> but a normal, a normal week, you know, I'm trapping and hunting and doing what I got to do to provide food for and, myself. And, all right, so you're doing all that, living in the woods, doing everything. This is exactly what you want to be doing. Yep. And what was your – so your dad had an opinion about your major in college. What was his opinion about this decision to be in the woods for two years, trapping and, and doing all that? Dad, dad and I relationship kind of got a strained a little bit when, when my parents split up. And, uh, you know, me being the oldest, seeing what it did to my mom and – my two younger brothers, uh, it, it took us a few years to get past all that. Yeah. Some of it was me, some of it was him. So when I, when I decided it was time for me to kind of get back in the real world and uh, start working again, you know, I went right back to Jay Burton Construction, uh, renting a house like I always did. And, Hold on. Uh, so you went to the shack for a couple years. I call it a shack. It's not really a it's shack. It's an old tobacco yeah. barn that Sanders that put we got a, a rock floor. Of it. You know. That's it, man. I just restored it a couple yeah. of years ago. Yep. What's inside it when you was there? It's a rock floor with that chimney and two old World War II bunk beds. Mm -hmm. And that's pretty much it. That's it. <laughs> and, and you we, you didn't have a car. No. So how did you get to the store? 
You didn't, didn't go, go to the store. He didn't go to the store. <laughs> I didn't need anything in the store. Well, how'd, where'd you get your water at? Creek down below. That's where I bathed at, too. Really? Yeah. And you ate everything. You went and killed and hunted and trapped for everything you ate. Pretty much. I mean, you know, look, I, it wasn't like I was living in the middle of British Columbia in an igloo. <laughs> yeah. Did you? you know, so you I do? had some sugar and some flour. I was just going to ask you. If you <laughs> I was just going to ask you, did you season the meat? Man, back then it stayed cold enough. I could bag a deer and leave the hide on it and gut it and go out and carve what I wanted and put it in some rentals out and put it in the coals. What? Yes. Was that it's, cold? It, it stayed, it froze from from like uh, mid-December into February. And w it, if it thawed, it didn't thaw like it yeah. did now, like it gets 71 days. So, yeah, that's. Okay. Yeah. So how did you stay warm? The fireplace. Oh, so because I had a fireplace in it. Yeah, there's a ch all right. Wow, you really did live off it's the It's pretty land. awesome. I didn't know if you maybe snuck a couple runs to Cracker Barrel or something like that. Maybe well, there wasn't, wasn't any Cracker Barrel. <laughs> <laughs> hey, man, you know, I went in town some. You know, hell, if it, you did know, you? bar hopping or whatever. You know, look, I'm <laughs> single, man. Did so, you, you know, yeah, I, you <laughs> raised, so you was raising a little hell in there oh, every once in a while? Oh, heck yeah. Yeah, okay, yeah. Jeff told me you were. <laughs> he said you, he said he wasn't. You know, he did party a little bit. It was, and you got to remember, man, it's, you know, I was brought up in the 70s. Yeah. Right. It, was, it, it was a different world yeah. in the 70s. So what made you decide, all right, it's time for me to go to work? I don't know. I don't, I think, I think the biggest thing, I was, I was at peace. Mm. I had done my, I had done what I felt like. I never, I don't even know if I really consciously gave it any thought. I knew where my soul was at, and I, I've always been at peace in the outdoors. And I just, you know, I, I didn't do, do didn't do well in college. I didn't know what the heck I'm gonna do in a livelihood. I just needed to, I just needed to unwind a little bit. Yeah. And then when I came out, I still didn't know. I just went back to work, and I'm, I always had my own place. Yeah. Were so, you and your dad still? Did y'all mended whatever little yeah, friction? Yeah, yeah. We was? started spending more time together, and of okay. course, you know. Just like me, I, the worst thing, the worst attribute anybody can have, but I can have no patience with it, laziness. So, Dad, you know, you at the you at the office at seven a.m. and you work till three thirty of those days. So, you know, I'm gonna be prompt. I'm not gonna be late. And you know that that started. Dad seeing okay, he's got his blankety blank together. How long after that did you drive your first race car? Well, the. I drove uh, uh, Carl Long's Daddy Horns' Volkswagen twice. When? I'm thinking that was 85. Were you in the cabin or were you out? No, I was I was renting been, uh, from a— You'd been out for a bit? Yeah, year or two? Probably, probably a year. Okay. I'm guessing. I'm, Has I your really, brother—was your, was your brother racing? Yeah, so Dad took Jeff straight from go-karts to late model stock. Okay. And he's got this red number twelve. Yeah, he's working on that and over at the house. And racing those guys back in them times, Bugs Harefield, yeah. Wayne Patterson, Maurice Hill, they were the best in the country, yeah. man. So I mean, they were kind of floundering at best. Yeah, you know. And and Cole offered me that, uh, or Mister Long offered me that Volkswagen. I just said, shoot, I bought a fire suit. And then uh, a gentleman named Carl Newble was putting together an old street stock. It was an old sportsman car. And we went out there, and I can remember them straightening the snout with a chain and a pickup truck. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but we uh, we qualified third and took the lead in, I don't know, it was 30-lap feature. Lap car got in my way, almost spun out, finished second. But af after that, everything else was second. <laughs> you know what I mean? The outdoors, the girls, the party, and everything came out after that race car. Yeah. Life is best lived in motion. And that's why Tire Pros gets you ready for all your driving adventures. Whether it's along corners and curves, across city and state lines. Because we're more than just tires. We're auto care too. Tire Pros, so you can focus on the road ahead.